we're on easy street and it feels so sweet because the world is but a treat when you're on easy street welcome to the easy street radio show hosted by rob scribner grab a cup of coffee and let's get started our videos are made possible by ranger rob poopy bags available at amazon right now Hello, everyone. This is Rob Scribner from Easy Street. I want to welcome Gene from Hamilton Radio. And I uh, always enjoy having Gene. And Gene, today is the day. You and I are going to do it. We're going to butt heads, right? I, I think we're, we, yeah, we definitely are because you know, <laughs> you know, we're not. I, I know we won't. And it's like, that's how good a, a friendship we have. But today's subject is old school politics. And now, Please, people, on this show, this is not a show to be triggered. This is a show to see two older gentlemen, you might say, <laughs> um, a little surprised at um, how people are reacting to politics and and uh, diversity. And so we constantly talk about this, and we thought, well, we should have a radio show about this. So, And what's really unique is you would never know that – if you were going to look at politics, I am. I, if I had to label myself, I'd say I was conservative. And Gene uh, is opposite of that, based on his past. And that doesn't mean that we don't change our 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 votes and stuff. But the thing is, is it's absolutely no impact between him and I. The fact that we have different um, parties that we tend to want to follow, but we're not that loyal. <laughs> Because Gene and I have talked about this many times. And uh, uh, yes, I've been a conservative, but I have voted for Democrats before. And you and, you and I have been talking. You said that you've done the same. I have opposite. done the same, yes. Opposite. And so it isn't based solely on on our parties as it is the individual or what, they're accompl or what they can accomplish for us. Do you agree with that? I do agree with that. I, I it also it, it depends on how they run as 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 their party affiliate or whatever they do. And you know, we usually you, you when you when you seek past experiences and look at, you know, when you hire somebody at a job, right? Let's put it that way. And you see the person has experience in this and has done this before, you would tend to think that they're going to want to go that way. You know, and that's kind of what you're thinking. So when you make your decision based on that, on past history alone, not their only affiliation with other people and their their past record, but everything taken into consideration, then you make your deciding vote. That's the way yeah. I look at it. I mean, that's a commonsensical way to look at it, right? Yeah. And see, with me, um, uh, I come. You would never know it, but I come from the aerospace industry. So I most of my career was aerospace. And so my first exposure to the conservative side was Reagan. And the reason I really knew about it is because it impacted my job. And so I, I'll be the first one to tell you, I worked on Peacekeeper. I worked on things like the B1B. I worked mm -hmm. on all kinds of, of hardware that was mm -hmm. really implemented a lot in the Reagan days. So immediately at a young age, I looked at uh, Republicans as a source of, of work for the for America. Um, we were building things like Peacekeeper and Avenger and B1, B1B and all these different things uh, and um, uh, IUS and all these things that uh, I worked on. Not, these are not secrets or anything. But um, I always looked at my parties as a uh, um, – Kind of American, uh, U.S. You know, built in America kind of thing. So I've always been kind of driven that direction. But I've, but I also have already told you that at one time I went with a different party because even with a conservative side back in the day, I voted for Clinton, and only because he, at the time, had. Um, the back, uh, background and the uh, uh, platform to address what was going on at the time. And the other gentleman at the time uh, just didn't push my buttons. And so I went with a different party. 
but there was no hatred or no trigger in it or anything. It was just using and looking at is um, I wasn't looking at personalities either. And uh, I was like, what's, what's this person going to do for me right now at this period of history? And so that's, that's the thing. Um, and, and uh, the other thing I want to make sure we talk about, we, uh, we only have a half hour, so I'm kind of moving faster, but yeah. I also want to talk about the fact that um, because of diversity, I grew up with, uh, I was telling you a story that my father and I, uh, my father used to take me hunting a lot. And he was an executive at this aerospace company. So he's with a lot of muckety mucks. And they would sit in the, after hunting, you know, hunting all day. They'd sit up in a camper. They'd have, have a few laughs, maybe have a snort. And they'd tease each other about their diversity. And, you know, uh, one would say, oh, you're just a silly tree hugger. <laughs> and the other one would say, well, you're just too practical, Scribner, and all these kind of things. And and they were just so f the best of friends uh, because of the diversity. And it seems like somehow that got lost. What do you think has caused, caused that? I think it's generation loss. I, I, I also I think the same way you do. I mean, and we're from different parts of the the planet too. Um, I, I still, you know, I remember my dad being part of the populist party and all his friends were either Republicans or Democrats and same thing. They had that same camaraderie where they got, a, got around everything and, you know, they would kid each other about something. Oh, you know, but at the end of the day, it didn't matter which party they voted for because they respected each other and they respected each other's choice. Because it's it's about it's it's about our again we have to say it common sense. Yeah. If you throw common sense into everything, it all makes sense, you know. And and from that, you know, you, your stock market grows. From your stock market grows, you know, your GDP product. And then you know, listen, a politician, the way I see it, a politician isn't a politician unless he listens. If he listens to you as a constituent or as a person and then speaks on what he hears, that's a good politician because he's he's listening to you. He's actually absorbing what you're saying. Yeah. Not just saying, oh, yeah, we'll take care of that. We'll do this. No, that doesn't mean anything. The person that listens, that's the politician. There's a definition of a politician, uh, politi politics. It's a poly, which means many. And tick means bloodsucker. And I believe it. And it, it fits them perfect to a T. Yeah. So why don't we go into 2021 with the advantage of knowing, okay, they're all bloodsuckers. Let's change that. We can change anytime we want to change anybody that we know. You know, I know several politicians that are great, great guys locally, um, you know, one guy I, I just bring up, his name is Richard Kanka. He lost his daughter years ago to a uh, sexual predator. And now they're going to let all them sexual predators out on the street. So I told him, I said, Richard, I said, how do you feel? You guys wrote a bill because your daughter was destroyed by this monster. And he was literally a monster. And he said, I don't know what to say. I don't I didn't think this day would ever come. But he didn't ever think his day to ever come where he would be able to be take the sex uh, predators off the street. So we have the power, right, Rob? We have the power. We can change anything we won't decide to do. If we want to work together, we'll work together. If we don't want to work together, it doesn't have to happen. And I'm not talking about you and I. I'm talking about yeah. us and sure. the American people. You know, yeah. if we were politicians, how I would act, you know, and that would be to be an astute, honest, which is. <laughs> Honest, come on, <laughs> honest in politics, honest yeah. politician, but at the same time, listen to the people and then form uh, an opinion on what I hear from the people in the area and the location and wherever your constituents are. That that way you establish that camaraderie that we were talking about with our, like our dads had with the people. Yeah, and you know, everybody, but you can help a majority of the people. Yeah, I guess one of the things that um, really bothered me is, um, and I, I have actually made a t-shirt of this and stuff, but 
the terminology facts, not feelings is really something that strikes with me with this new generation. I truly understand. And I meet people all the time who say, Oh, that guy that's in there right now. I just can't stand him. I got to get him. I just can't stand him. But then he uses like, okay, but has he done anything? And, and there's a list, man. There's a big list. And, and it was really different about this particular guy is he's made this list before he was elected and he worked with the list and stayed on the list and, and went and chopped away at a lot of them um, as what power and what things he was able to do. Uh, obviously, you can't just go in there and say, I'm going to change uh, health care or something like that without the rest of the party involved in that. But right. there's not very many people that have actually made a list, said what they're going to do, and then actually do it. And so I kind of, to me, it's like, all right, I don't care about the personality because if you guys really analyze what it would be like to be working in D.C., they're a bunch of animals. And uh, so you may as well send an animal in to handle the animals. And so zookeeper, uh, <laughs> it's really not about personalities. It's like you can't ha send a soft spoken, well-worded man that's soft, you know, and, and into a, a a cage of wolves, right? Where it's like, you know, if anything, send a bear in with the wolves, and that's kind of what we've done, and that's what's everybody's surprise. And the bear is an asshole. <laughs> I'll just use that word. No, he's not a likable person. He's not the kind of guy I really, really enjoy yeah, having dinner I with. Agree. I agree. But he made a list, and it's a list that I liked, and he's actually ch got check marks next to him. How many? presidents have we had to do that you're right um, do i like the guy but do i feel like the person that's gonna take that spot trying to take that spot has a good list and it can will start checking off stuff i just don't feel it and it, nor are those really clear check you know a lot you know um events that he's marking off we had really clear path of what this guy we currently have um will be would do and he actually has done it and that's kind of why we like can we just give him four more years to see if he can actually accomplish some of the things he said he's going to do and forget about the personality because he's a jerk yeah we stand a jerk that he even, admits it. he even admits he's a jerk he even admits it yeah and that's really what we say is like okay great you just don't send somebody in against the people with guns with a slingshot you send the other people with a machine gun you know, and let them duke it out. And that's exactly what's going on right now. That's how we looked at it. And yes, I understand that he's not likable. And yes, I understand that he uh, is not like all the others. And I understand also that he's uh, not a well, you know, good speaker and his vocabulary goes kind of crazy. But that's not the point. But I meet so many people that are voting or are influenced because of personality just they're making the decision because they just don't like the guy <laughs> and and so that worries me too but uh and i understand it too we all do that and we and that's nothing old or new that's gone on for years and years people did it like i really like that guy i'm gonna vote him in but now it's you know we got so many things going on um but the thing that really concerns me is how easily people are triggered and we can't talk uh, like you and I, like I just took one side, but I know you have other things that you're concerned about. And it's like, I don't see you throwing things down, shutting off the computer and walking away. Um, and so, uh, and of course, I'll quit yakking here because it's your turn to talk. <laughs> so, you, go know, for it. you know, it's point counterpoint type of thing. But I, 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 I definitely agree with everything mm -hmm. you're saying. And, and again, I'm coming from the other side. Yeah. I'm representing the other side. I'm glad to represent the other side because they need somebody that makes sense on the other side. Yeah, I, the other I, side's I, got some great stuff. Uh, but, I, I'll, but, I'll, just, I'll defend you even saying that you were the party, were at least uh, when I understood it, a party of the people. Well, that was put out, but you know, the United States is a republic. It's not a democracy. So when you're saying democratic, 
you're saying democracy. We're not a democracy. We, we were a republic from day one. Yeah. They try to turn us into democracy so they can turn us into socialism. Socialism is bad. You don't want socialism. It was it's communism on on steroids. It, it's communism yeah. that you know we years ago we were told that it's not good, and there was a reason for it because it's it's con the government controlling you, which the government kind of controls us a little bit now, but not as much. When you talk about complete control, you're talking about they regulate your energy, they regulate your how much water you can have, and that's it's a bad, bad place to be. There's no, we have little freedoms now. The little freedoms that we have now will be gone too. So we'll be no freedoms. We're in an illusion of freedom, right? So each party, and I always say it's like the Batman Robin defense, you know. You play Batman one year, and I'll play Robin the next year, and then you play Batman one year, and I'll play Robin the next year, and I'll play Batman and Robin. And you always have, like, the savior coming in, saving you. This is a scenario that's been going on for years. It Nobody's saving us, okay? We we have to save ourselves. If we can't get banks to work together, if you can't get the stock market to stay high, if you can't get a GDP to be good, if you can't keep taxes low, these are just some of the little things that we need to do. And this party on my side has blown it in my eyes. They have blown it. The immigration, they're horrible on immigration, abortion, horrible on abortion. If you want to get into it, even a transgender type of thing, I have no problem with transgender people. They can be, they can marry a bookcase for all I care. You know, I respect them. They can do whatever they want. They can act as dogs, cats, Fish, horses, doesn't matter. Do whatever you want. But don't let me make you part. I have to be part of that. I'll let you do it, but I don't care about it. I still treat you with respect, but I don't want to know anything about it. I, I don't yeah. put it in my face. And yeah, that's but, what I think this party has been doing for every, uh, for every person is shoving it right in your face. And that's why you get the backlash of the other party. Because we're not shoving stuff in their face. Yeah, we both we both are agreeing on the diversity. We love a diversity. I I get the biggest kick out of meeting someone that's gay or someone who's cross gender or somebody who wants to be a rabbit. Um, and I, I I could sit down and have lunch and dinner with them and just have the greatest time understanding yeah. their lifestyle. But the minute they say, "You need to join me," <laughs> it's like I'm done. Exactly. I don't want to join you. I, I want to celebrate you and I want to understand you. But um, but there's got there's something's gone farther than that where it's like, oh no, you not only that, but you need to embrace me. And it's like, well, no, 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 no. <laughs> I want to understand you, I want to like you, I want to work with you, I want to um, uh, be in the hum human kind with you, the whole works, but I don't want to be a rabbit. I don't want to be a cross dresser. Right. Right. I just want to know you, and I want to work side by side with you and accomplish some things together, and uh, and 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 have giggles about you know an old guy like me and a person that wants to be a rabbit and have some jokes about it and and embrace each other and then be friends all the time. And <laughs> and that's really that's kind of the old life and it's, it's really sad. But one of the things I did want to bring up and I think you'd agree with me is I actually recently have done homework and, and, and went back cause I'm worried about the economy and it's like, what happened in the depression? <clears throat> and really the depression was a big driver back in the day. And so what turns out is history is replaying itself. And so, and people are acting the same way and you say, no way. But literally, guys, go on YouTube, get the documentaries and start watching either uh, information about the Depression, how it happened, or the beginning of World War II. <clears throat> and you will find that all these same words, all these same things that we're talking about, <laughs> you'll, you'll look at these old clips and they're black and white and they're showing people protesting and stuff. And there's the same signs that we have today fascism, all these other things. And it's like, guys, this is nothing new. The thing is, is if we did some homework, if we went back, you've realized what this has happened before. And there's, and we can see the results of different countries reacted to it differently. 
For example, we went into depression, which caused Germany to go into depression. Right. Germany reacted different. They started their government. Uh, they were looking for someone to get them out of it. And so, of course, Hitler came to power and fascism and all these things. And then other countries like France and uh, uh, Italy got Mussolini and uh, some other folks all came to power from the different countries reacting differently to economy issues. And it's funny, but aren't we in an economy issue right now? <laughs> And are we hearing the same things? Like, I think socialism is the way to go. And then some countries did. Other ones didn't. And and so, guys, this is not nothing new. But can we learn from them? And which countries were successful once they went the direction that they did? The ones that went socialist uh, didn't do so well. <laughs> so um, we could prevent a lot of things by understanding our history. That's a good point. I also like that the, the idea about an old constitutionalist. If you look at the old constitution when it was written years and years ago, and after so many years, they tried to restructure the constitution and they got other amendments passed. Well, they amended that slaves should be part of the constitution. So that was a constitutional directive because the constitution was amended that way. If we look back, the original constitution wasn't set that way. So we've made changes that weren't good for our country. It wasn't good for people, but they did it at the time because they could. Yeah. Now they're locked into something that originally the constitution says you can't do it, but they did it. They got around it. So our Supreme court justices are key, right? They're key to what we pass now as an amendment or an amendment to the constitution. So if, if it's more conservative, on the, the, the Supreme Court side, I think people have a better choice when it's more on the other side. I think people, they get thrown in this one position where they figure they can do anything and everything and, and never have to pay for it, never have to worry about it. Life does not work that way. Wow. It doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat. You still have to find a way to pay for it. There's no free rides in this country. No free yeah. rides. So get over it. Get over it. And in, in your opinion, um, what do you think might be some of the cure to overreaction? Um, this is really broad. So, I, uh, um, listening to one another, being triggered. Um, well, I, I guess the big part is, uh, um, don't put up the hand where you say talk to the hand <laughs> type thing. How do we? hear each other again and still be friends well the the, the, the real reason is you got to listen and we we're just talking about you let it listen I, i'm listening to you I, i'm sitting here i am listening to you and then i'm reacting to what you say i'm not trying to over talk you no, no and i'm not at all. fighting back my words and i'm trying to uh maintain uh, who i am but that's because i was raised that way Today's generation are, you know, they got to get their words out there because they figure they're not going to get heard. And, and that's any time. And re I remember any family, big family, the kids around the table <laughs> would scream and holler and yell and complain. And I said to the mom, I said, why are they screaming, and hollering and complaining? I said, because they won't get their words out. So that's kind of where we're at right now in this, this country. People yeah. feel that they're not being heard. And if they're not being heard, they're going to scream louder. You want me to scream? I'll scream louder. I'm, I'm an Italian, so I talk loud no matter what. My kids say, <laughs> you're always screaming. I said, but no, I'm just talking. I'm not screaming. I had to be heard in my household because my father used to say, well, if you're not loud enough, so you develop that loud voice, you know, yeah. and you stay loud your whole life. <laughs> you, can't, you can't talk okay. loud. I don't know how many times I've listened to like you. You do little shows every day uh, when you can, yeah. And I hear other people doing shows. I don't know how many times every day I hear, "Oh, I never thought of that," or "Oh, what a great idea," yeah, or "Oh," and especially when I'm doing radio shows and stuff, and I'll hear someone talk about something. Go, how many times have I told you, Gene? I'm going to do a radio show about what you just talked <laughs> yeah. about. And I fact, this, this show actually, today's show is actually motivated from one of your shows today. 
Um, you're actually talking more about business and stuff, but um, I just think I'm going, you know what? There's some old time, you know, timers wisdom here. And, and yeah. uh, you're such a good spokes spokesman. I really admire um, your, your yeah, ability. I, to. I, I do you as well. Um, and I, I would do anything to have the vocabulary and the charisma that you have. Um, uh, <laughs> but Thank I you. always say that is everybody has a different kind of level and I will connect with certain people and you'll connect with certain people, but we can still get the same message out. And, and somebody might connect with me a little easier on the same subject as somebody that might connect with you at a different level. And so I, I say that about politics and I say that about religion too. It's like, there's a lot of people that talk about religion and I'm, we're not going to that other than the fact that those who represent religion and talk about it to another, some people talk about it in such a way that turns people off. Yeah. Yeah. And there's others that do it in a slight manner and ease into it. And then there's others that kind of wait for the opportunity and say, well, this is what I believe. And, and, I will connect to other people. You know, if I was taking the religious side, I would connect to certain people that a minister would not, because they're you know they're they're intimidating. Um, and and uh, uh, you have that ability to reach people that I can't, and I have the ability to reach people that you can't. And when you combine that power, wow! Yeah, it's huge. Moment. It is huge. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right about the religion too, because I I, I got to tell you it. Even born and raised Catholic, my whole life, I, 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 you know, I told my wife the other night. I said, if something should happen to me, please, I, I don't want a, a Roman Catholic uh, funeral. I, I'd rather just have a little small thing with her, you know, minister from her uh, Methodist church. Yeah. I mean, uh, God is God. God doesn't. God doesn't. God doesn't expect you to go to a red church or a brown church or a green church or a blue church. It's just, he just wants you to talk to him. He just, he wants you to, you know, acknowledge him and you're supposed to tell God what you do, not a priest. Priest is a priest is a person that, and I'll probably get yelled at for saying it, but a priest is a person, you know, and I don't care. I'm not trying to put priests down. I'm just saying, I don't see value in priests anymore. I don't see that they're, they're telling you that you have to talk to them to talk to God. That's not true. You can talk yeah. to God anytime you want yeah. to. Best can, place is in the dark in the closet, all by yourself. Just one in, in your bedroom at night when you're sleeping. You yeah. meditate. You 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 know. I do that mm -hmm. every night. I I think I thank God for all the blessings that we have. Yep. First blessing is my family, my kids, my pets. Second blessing is our home, and third blessing, of course, is all the love from each other. And the fourth blessing is vehicles, and you know, you can go on and on and on. But you know, if we were more talking about the blessings that we have and not the things we don't have because you and I don't care about certain things. I don't care if I ever have a yacht. I don't care if I ever have a, a, a big vacation. I don't care if I ever have a big home. I don't care if I ever become so super successful that I'm worth a lot of money. I mean, the only thing is only going to benefit the people around me, but yeah, just, remember, me just, remember, <laughs> just remember me when you get rich and famous. Well, I'm saying if, if, yeah. if it ever comes, I mean, it, yeah. it, it could overnight. Well, this is uh, our first half hour is up, and I and uh, I may turn this in into a part two. So I'm going to end this segment, um, and then we'll go from there. So, uh, Gene, first of all, I always love talking to you, and I want to wish everybody who's listening, first of all, to keep your minds open. Don't get triggered over anything we're doing here. We're just trying to kind of compare old school to new school. Maybe there's a good compromise between the two. And, and, and maybe we can move on and be more together. And so anyway, guys, I want to thank you for listening to Easy Street. Until next time, bye. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.